hi everyone in this video we are going to be looking at a very important layer uh, usually used in natural language processing it is the embedded layer and in this example in this video we are going to be looking at uh, how when we perform forward propagation and backward propagation how the weights are updated so in PyTorch we can create it using the embedded module touch.nm.embedding right and the arguments for this example are going to be five and two five okay maybe less when we draw uh, create an embedded layer something like this is created a kind of dictionary that has uh, so <clears throat> for this example the the number of entries in the dictionary are going to be the number of entries is going to be five and each entry is going to have a tensor of dimension two okay so by the way we are going to create a neural network that the output of this embedded layer will go through this neural network uh, for some classification and uh, yeah just to create a kind of a concrete example so these entries uh, the first entry might represent the word a and the last one might be for, for the word zebra and the tensor representation of a at the beginning can be random uh, let's see 0 0.7 0 0.9 0 0.6 0 0.5 minus 1.1 minus 1.6 minus 1.9 okay so <clears throat> the input of okay let's maybe create our neural network the neural network is going we are going to be using will have two layers Layer one is going to have six neurons or six input features. Layer two is going to have uh, just one neuron. All right, so the input for our classification, we are going to have a text. This text can be something like NLP is good. So we want to maybe classify this text, maybe for sentiment analysis. So to push this text into the neural network, it first has to go through the embedded layer. So and after it uh, kind of goes through the embedded layer, the output is going to be something like this. NLP is good. Sorry for my drawing. Maybe we can highlight some of this so this is the embedded layer and this is our neurons i just I don't want to make to make uh, the kind of the diagram to look dull that's why i may be highlighting so this is our neural network okay And this is the input, NLP is good. All right, so uh, what's going to happen is this has a dimension of three by two. So this is what goes to this neural network for classification. So NLP the representation, okay. I maybe I'm not done with this. So this tensor might be for the word good. This might be for the word is, and this might be for the word NLP. Okay, so <coughs> the tensor representation of NLP is 0 0.6 minus 1.6. Tensor representation of is is this, and good. Okay, and by the way, when we perform backward propagation, only this tensors are going to be updated because they are the are ones that go to into the neural network a and zebra will not be updated because they are not part of the input 
All right, so I just want to reshape this to have a dimension of one by six, or in other words, B, S by F. B, S is the part size, so we only have one example, and it has a dimension of six, so we are just squeezing this input. In PyTorch, uh, you can create this layer using the linear layer. You can also create this using the linear layer. This, uh, this is layer one, layer two. And this is going to be six one, six one. I'm going to put in the description kind of a detailed uh, explanation on the fault propagation of each layer. Uh, so this is one by six. I'm going to call this, so this is the input features Oh, this is one. Sorry, this is one. This is the input feature, the output feature. Input, output. So, this I'm going to call it F. This I'm going to call it F1. This, this must be F1 and this is F2. Okay. So, this is our linear. This are our linear layers. Okay. So, let's quickly see what happens in layer one. In layer one, we compute Z1. What we, okay, let's call this A0. We take the input, which is A0, and we multiply it by W. So A0 times W1 transpose plus B1. W1 has a dimension of F1 by F, then we take the transpose. B1 has a dimension of 1 by F1. A1 has dimension of BS by F. So when you perform the computation, you'll end up with a tensor of dimension 1 by F1. Then we'll compute A1, which is Z1, which is... If there was an uh, activation in this layer, it's going to be activation of Z1. Okay, so don't forget that this is... Uh, this. This is a dimension. Whether or not to have an activation uh, really matters for back propagation. So let's look at uh, layer two. Z two is going to be a one w two transpose plus b one. W two has a dimension of f two by one. F two by f one. We're going to take the transpose of b two has a dimension of one by f two. Uh, A1 has a dimension of 1 by F1, so after the computation, we'll end up with a tensor of dimension 1 by F2. Then we'll compute A2, and it is going to be sigmoid of Z2. The dimension is also going to be 1 by F2. So, this is a dimension and it relied on this F2. Okay, so let's start backward propagation. By the way, the loss function is going to be PCE loss and the act uh, what you call it, optimizer is going to be stochastic gradient descent. So in backward propagation, you move backwards. So we start with DA2. The derivative of the loss function with respect to A2. Uh, when we derive the BCE loss, uh, I'm not going to get into the calculus, but it's the formula is this. And the dimension, the resulting dimension uh, is this. If you really if you really are interested in the forward and proper backward propagation, I have I have made a video before, it's going to be in the description. Then we we complete dz two it's going to be the a2 it relies on the a2 multiplied by sigmoid of z2 multiplied by one minus sigmoid of z2 the resulting tensor will have a dimension of bs by f2 so we have what we uh, need to compute dw2 and db2 so dw2 is going to be dz Two transpose if this was one d1 dw1 this would be dz 
one transpose multiplied by a1 so if this was dw1 this would be a0 multiplied by 1 over part size when you do the computation add up with tensor of f2 by f1 so these are all dimensions quickly let's look at db uh, db2 db2 what really happens is you take dz2 and you squeeze uh, all the columns so this column you make use you sorry you sum all the columns so you end up with just one row one by f2 the number of columns is f2 okay so don't forget that this is uh, a dimension all right quickly let's move to the uh back propagation of layer one so we need to compute the a1 just as we did here the a1 the a1 is actually going to be dz2 times w2 so <clears throat> uh, and after you uh, you multiply the tensors you end up with a tensor of dimension bs by f1 then you compute dz1 dz1 similar to here it's going to rely on the a1 so it is was 5 dz5 this is going to be the a5 you will end up with tensor of dimension okay so in this layer we don't have any activation so it's just going to be the a1 if there was an activation that's how why we multiply by the maybe sigmoid of z2 here so dz1 transpose a0 okay and after you multiply you end up with tensor of dimension uh, f1 by f okay this is f then d b1 db1 is you take dz1 here we take dz2 here we are going to take dz1 okay if it was db5 this is going to we are going to take dz5 then you sum all the columns then you'll end up with tensor of 1 by f uh, f1 all right maybe i should have mentioned this we need to multiply whatever you uh, have here multiplied by one multiply whatever you have by one divided by bs similarly here whatever you have multiplied by one divided by bs similarly here multiply one divided by bs i forgot to mention this but bs is the batch size so we are done with uh record propagation of layer one these are all dimensions quickly let's move and see how the weights are updated here so we compute the a0 it's going to be dz1 times w1 then dz0 is going to be the a0 when you perform the computation f b s by f this is going to be the dimension dz0 b s if we don't forget d s is one by b s is one and f is six so we are going to reshape it to three by two okay so to update the weights what we need to do is we take dz uh 
dz0 transpose dz0 transpose will have a dimension of 2 by 3 transpose of this <coughs> dz0 transpose we multiplied by a special mat matrix okay i've put all zeros here so nlp is good it's going to have a dimension of all right so create a number of words here is five so create five rows the embedding number of entries in the embedding layer is five so create for each row create five zeros <coughs> this is what i did here so the index of nlp here is zero one two thirty so you make zero one two three you make this one the index of is here is zero one two you make zero one two you make the two the kind of you count zero one two then you make it one the index of good is zero one then you count zero one and you make this one you <coughs> multiply them after you multiply them you end up with a tensor of two by five then you take its transpose. Okay, don't forget this is these are all dimension. You take the transpose. After the transpose, it's going to be five by two. So let's call this E. To compute the new E, you say E using gradient descent is E minus the learner rate multiplied by Maybe you can call this R, for example, R. And so this is this is it. This is how you compute the new uh, weight of the embedding. Notice that after you do this computation, you get the result. This A and zebra will not change because they are not part of the input. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was clear. Thank you.